Okay, geometry students, welcome to the uh, lesson on uh, parts of similar triangles. And so what we're looking to do is to extend what you learned uh, last lesson. Uh, and last lesson was focused on proving similarity between triangles. Uh, and so that would have been using the same um, uh, postulates or theorems as we use to prove uh, congruency of triangles um, with one variation. And that is, of course, that we can uh, use AA uh, in order to prove triangle similarity. And so basically the idea is to extend uh, CP, S, T, P. Corresponding parts of similar triangles are proportional. And what we're going to do is we're going to extend this portion of uh, that little acronym, and that is to say uh, we're going to show you today three additional parts of a triangle uh, which uh, are, are corresponding, and if the triangles are similar, they are in the same uh, ratio uh, as the ratios between the two triangles. Okay, and so to, uh, to demonstrate what I'm going to do is show you uh, using a GSP. Okay, so what we have uh, over here or uh, let me just get rid of that. We have two triangles, uh, and it has been given that those two triangles are uh, similar to each other. So triangle ABC uh, is uh, similar to triangle PQR, and you'll notice I've tried to uh, color code the sides so we can see which of the sides are corresponding uh, and therefore can be used uh, in uh, proportions. Okay, and so firstly, uh, what we're going to do is show median. So if you recall, uh, a median is a line segment from the vertex of a triangle that cuts the opposite side in half. Uh, and so what I have are corresponding medians AE and PF. And it's very important that you understand that those medians are corresponding. And the way that we know that those medians are corresponding is because uh, the first median is drawn from vertex A. Uh, the second median is drawn from vertex P and A and P are corresponding angles in the two similar triangles. Okay, and so I'll give you an example of a non-corresponding median. If we had, for instance, median QG, that median does not correspond to AE. It would, of course, correspond to the median drawn from vertex B, but it does not correspond to AE and therefore should not be used uh, in a proportion. Okay, so we'll get rid of that just so uh, we highlighted the importance of them being corresponding parts. Uh, and so what we're able to do once we've established that the triangles are similar and that these are corresponding parts is that we can use them uh, in a proportion. And so what you see is we have side AB over side PQ. So AB and PQ are corresponding sides. And so we can write them as a ratio and those are going to equal uh, they could actually equal the ratio of any of the other corresponding sides, but the purpose of this lesson is to also explain that in addition to being able to make a ratio of corresponding sides, we can also make a ratio of corresponding medians. And so those corresponding medians, AE and PF. And this is the central idea behind the lesson. Uh, and really all we're going to do now is extend it to two other corresponding parts. So we have corresponding medians. Once we have triangles congruent, uh, let's get rid of those uh, and we'll reset our medians. The next is an altitude uh, line segment drawn from the vertex of a triangle cutting the opposite side at 90 degrees, not necessarily in half. Um, so by definition, the altitude is at 90 degrees. And of course, you may recall if the triangle is obtuse, then the altitude can actually be outside of the triangle. But that doesn't uh, affect uh, uh, the, uh, the theorem. And so uh, if we have got congruent triangles, we have uh, big point, if we have similar triangles, if we have corresponding altitudes, then we can uh, make uh, a proportion using the ratio of corresponding sides and the ratio of corresponding altitudes. Okay, and then finally, the third corresponding part would be an angle bisector. So once again, uh, an angle bisector from the uh, uh, cuts the vertex angle in half does not necessarily cut the opposite side in half, does not necessarily cut the opposite side at 90 degrees. And so as long as they come from corresponding vertices and they're in similar triangles, then we are able, as we did with the others, to make a proportion uh, with corresponding sides equal to the corresponding angle bisectors. And so in summary, uh, what we have is 
corresponding medians in similar triangles, corresponding altitudes and corresponding angle bisectors, all of which can be used in proportions with corresponding sides or in fact with each other. And so we could also um, have ratios or rather proportions of medians equal to altitudes once we've established the triangles are uh, similar. And of course, uh, establishing the triangles are similar, uh, we use AA, SAS, SSS, uh, and so forth, uh, and HL. Uh, and, uh, and so those are our uh, similarity um, uh, postulates or theorems. Okay, and so those are the, uh, the corresponding parts of similar triangles. And in this particular case, what we have are pairs of triangles. And so I'm going to jump to the examples now. We'll solve those, and then I'm going to come back to the final theorem for the lesson. Okay. So if we move down here, that's essentially what I've explained in the GSP. So in our first example over here, uh, we uh, have to find the value of x. You can see very clearly that x is the length of uh, altitude yq. Um, uh, and we're going to uh, use corresponding parts of similar triangles. To do that, what we're going to need to do is establish first that they're similar. So you can see we have angle L and angle S are congruent. We have angle K and angle Z congruent. And this allows us to conclude uh, by AA that uh, triangle LKM is similar. So I've gone from the double angle to the single angle to the unmarked angle. And so uh, for the other triangle, uh, let me just clean that up. I'll go uh, double to single to unmarked. And so that's going to be SZY. Uh, once we have uh, similar triangles, we can then uh, establish a, a proportion of uh, corresponding sides, which includes uh, corresponding altitudes. Next thing to determine, of course, uh, is which of the sides in triangle uh, KLM correspond to the given side in triangle SYZ. And so YS corresponds, as you can see from the similarity statement, to ML. And this is the side we need. This uh, measure of 20 uh, is uh, superfluous for this particular uh, problem, uh, unless we were also being asked to find the measures of uh, side ZY, but we're not in this case. And so now I'm going to make uh, a ratio, uh, sorry, a, a proportion, an equation of ratios. And so it doesn't really matter how you set it up. You could do altitude over altitude, or you can do um, altitude over side as long as you get them corresponding. And so in this particular case, I'm going to say X over 15. So the altitude over the side uh, in the small triangle, and then I will do altitude over side uh, in the large triangle. As long as they're corresponding, there's multiple options for uh, setting that up. Okay, and then I'm going to rearrange this um, in order to get rid of the fractions. And so cross multiplying, uh, we have 24x equal to 15 times 60, which gives us 240, divide both sides by 24, and we have x equal to 10. Uh, x equal to 10. Okay, let's move ahead to the second example. Second example, uh, very similar in approach uh, to the first one. Uh, we have been asked to find the value of x. In this particular case, x represents the length of half of one of the sides. <clears throat> so, uh, uh, if a side has been cut in half and the segment that cuts it in half has come from a vertex, then of course uh, DC is a median. Similarly, WQ is a median. And so we know the length of side AB, the full length is going to be 2x. Uh, the full length of side UV is going to be 6, because if this is 3 and this is 3, the length of the side is 6. Again, before we use any of these theorems, what we need to do is establish similarity. And so we have angle A congruent to angle U, we have angle B congruent to angle V, and that's enough for us to establish uh, similarity of triangles, I beg your pardon, uh, and so we have triangle A, B, C, and that is going to be uh, similar to triangle U, uh, V, W, uh, and then we're going to, uh, much like we did in the previous example, we're just going to set up a proportion uh, and solve, and so my proportion will be 2x over 13.5. And so again, multiple options for this. I'm just using side length over median. And then in the other triangle, 
corresponding side length over uh, median, corresponding median, uh, and then I'm going to once again cross multiply and solve. So we have 18x uh, and 6 times 13.5, uh, which is going to give us 81. Uh, x is equal to 81 over 18, which you can leave in that form if you wish, or uh, we can simplify that down to 4.5. Okay, I'm going to jump back to the GSP uh, and just explain the final theorem uh, for today. And the final theorem is a little bit different. What you'll notice here is, of course, that we only have a single triangle. And so uh, this does not require um, a pair of similar triangles. This theorem applies uh, in a single triangle, and that's how you'll know uh, it's this theorem. Okay, and so the theorem says if we have uh, an angle bisector, uh, then what happens is uh, the, the bisector of an angle of a triangle cuts uh, the opposite side uh, proportionally. Uh, and what that basically means, uh, let me just see very quickly. Um, <clears throat> uh, actually, I'll, I'll leave that for now. What, <clears throat> what it means is that side AB and side BC, which are the two sides of the triangle that have not been um, um, cut in any way, yeah, uh, the, ratio, the, the ratio of side AB to BC is going to be the same as the ratio of side AE to CE. And so AB over BC will equal AE over EC, and this is just an alternate way of, of stating that same proportion. Okay, so let's see what it looks like in example form. And so what we have here, of course, is a single triangle with a bisected angle. And so what it means is the ratio of X uh, to 13 is going to be the same as the ratio of 4 to 6, uh, according to the, uh, the triangle angle bisector theorem. And so uh, to solve this, uh, again, multiple options for how you want to set this up. You can set it up as x over 4 is equal to uh, 13 over 6. We could also have set it up as x over 13 equals 4 over 6, uh, and so forth. Okay, and so uh, solving, we have 6x, uh, what does that give us, equals 52. Uh, and then we're going to divide through x is equal to 52 over 6, which is 8 point six recurring or you just leave it as uh, 52 uh, over six okay and then for the final example uh, it, uh, essentially the same question uh, with one small added uh, variation or complication uh, x is this piece over here and you're given the full side as 20 and so uh, just a little bit of algebra if this is x and the full side is 20 then this is 20 minus x and we can use 20 minus x and x in our proportion uh, instead of using the 20 because the theorem applies to the pieces of the sides. And so in this case, 11 is to 14 uh, as 20 minus x is to x. Uh, and now a standard procedure for solving uh, 11x is equal to 280 minus 14x. And so uh, obtained by, once again, cross-multiplying. Uh, and then when I cross-multiply the 14, of course, I should distribute out. Um, move the x's to the left-hand side gives us 25x equal to 280. Uh, x is equal to 280 over 25, uh, which, uh, if you want in decimal form, I believe is 11.2.